Hey everybody, it's Tiffany with Tiffany's Paper Shop, and I have promised that I would do a quick walkthrough of my vintage junk journal using um, supplies from Hobby Lobby. I, de I mostly decorated it with supplies from Hobby Lobby. The insides are not all, you know, all the paper isn't necessarily all from Hobby Lobby. So just a little disclaimer there. Oh, I am so addicted to pretty papers. Let's just throw that out there right now. Are you guys addicted to paper? Oh, I have so much paper. I have like two rooms full of paper in my basement. It's so much fun. Alrighty. Um, let's, let's just get started. I'm going to show you the things that I bought from Hobby Lobby. Don't feel like you have to go buy all of these things. You, you probably, I mean, I think I used six different, seven different laces. You don't need to buy all of them. You maybe buy a couple different sizes. I think I will kind of lay these out. They kind of have names on them, so you could take a screenshot if you wanted to. So let's do this really quick. So I've got two cute little like dainty trims here. So you could just buy one of them. I just love them both, these two. And then a couple of a little bit wider, little scallopy type things. Let's see, find the name. There we go. And then this one is from the, like the end cap where the, you find the lace trims and it's by the yard. It's wrapped around a, like a big card, kind of. Um, it was $4.50 a yard on sale. So you could just buy one yard. I don't know if they would even sell you just a foot or something like that. So that wouldn't cost too much. Maybe, you know, a little over a dollar for a foot um, and then this one nylon net lace let's see I can get, oops, get all of these in here for a screenshot for you and then one more large one this one so pretty All the lace you can screenshot that if you'd like so this one I actually tea dyed some of it I've used it here on the cover and I made a pocket with it inside I only used a little piece of this so probably not really necessary a couple little tiny pieces of it this one I love, so cute, so vintage -y. Crochet scallop trim. I think I will use that one a lot. Um, decorative trim. Crochet trim with ball. I only use a little piece of this too, so you probably don't need this one. Nylon net lace trim. Um, also, these two things from Tim Holtz. This has got just a lot of fun tags in it. Mm, and it was $4.99. Um, the Tim Holtz stuff was on sale last week. Sorry, I'm slow getting this video up. But their stuff goes on sale. It rotates and everything goes on sale every like two to three weeks, I want to say. And then this package of die cuts. So, wow, there is so much in here, you guys. Look how pretty they are. So vintagey. Gosh, my lighting. Oh, just not great. <laughs> I'm sorry. Are those so sweet? Beautiful vintagey stuff, but I found some pretty blues like bluebells or forget me nots or something in here. I'll look at this one, and it's got a bunch of butterflies, some bigger ones. So that's really fun. I love that. 
All right. There's one of the tags I was going to use somewhere. I've got touches of green in this journal as well. Lots of blues and then a few touches of green. I also grabbed, this was just a splurge. You don't need fabric, but I love fabric for the tabs, even maybe for a uh, to rip and um, use on edges of make little, um, well, yeah, what am I saying? <laughs> little, uh, I don't know, edging stuff. I can't think of the word I want. So this, gosh, this matches so well with the paper. Look at that. And it, they're not exactly the same. They don't go with each other. I just found this the other day, so I only used a tiny bit of that. All these, I just used a teeny bit of. And I did actually ask them how much, what is the smallest piece that you can get um, cut? And they said an eighth of a yard. So that's only like five inches. So if it's $8 a yard and you get an eighth of a yard, that's only like a dollar, right? So that's not bad. I think that's cheaper than buying ribbon or lace. I mean, either one. Okay, here are the papers I used. These are just from the open stock. So I used one sheet of each of these and then I used, grab an extra one of this one if you like because I actually cut a piece, I fussy cut a, a little section of this out and I'll show you that in the book. So, so let's see. Let's see, I had a darker there's a navy blue. I'm not sure where that's going to. But, yeah, where did that go? How funny. But I'll show you inside. I just made a tag out of it. But, so there's one that's a navy blue base that's similar to this. Um, so two of this one, and then one of those, one of those, one of the blue gingham. Oh, there it is, right there. Pretty, isn't that? One of the script. Now let me show you how fun this is. So I actually tea dyed this paper. Oh, and also one more thing about the paper. So I bought this a couple days ago. I showed it in my craft haul. This has the same, they have only through, I think they have a pink and a blue and a green of this gingham, this size in their open stock paper. But this has the same one in it and Bunch, bunches of colors, cute colors, all different sh sizes of ginghams. And I love ginghams. If you've seen my videos, you know that. $5.49 on clearance. So that is a great deal. You might want to grab one of those. I grabbed two of them because <laughs> I'm addicted to paper. But so let me show you how fun I tea dyed this to make it look vintagey. And look at the difference before and after. Okay, even the back is cute, right? And I put, I, I accidentally ripped it because it got, I let it sit for a while. It got pretty soft and I was trying to pick it up and it kind of ripped, which it's just cute. I mean, that's okay. I put a little bit of my grunged tape that you make with um, alcohol ink on it to make it, the tape look old. Is that adorable? I just, I thought it was so funny. I've made, I have been tea dyeing stuff like crazy lace and paper and doilies and oh, so much fun. Okay, I'm trying to hurry. I've done this video three times now. This is my third time. So if I, yeah, I'm not sure what I'm saying. It's because I'm not sure if I've already said it in this video or not. So YouTube has changed like the uploading process. And I can't, I cannot make it upload the video I did. So it looks like I have to use, actually use YouTube to make the video now. So I'm redoing it. Oh, anyway, what a day. Let's see. <laughs> Where was it? That won't mean anything to you unless you make YouTube videos. But... Um, so I showed you the paper pads. Yeah, so just one sheet of each of those from the open stock. These are 59, and I think these are 69. 
and they do have the you know the printing the writing on the back of some of them which if you buy the pad it does not have this stuff on the back but I just you know back it with something else or fold it up and make a pocket where that where that um, writing is okay let's jump into the journal uh, let's see I, this butterfly came from the Tim Holtz die cut package this, these things I was just showing you I don't know where I put that package this is um, grab a blue actually uh, just a piece of blue cardstock that matches the blue floral and I embossed on that but you can use any if you have an embossing folder I've got a couple for sale in my shop that I will show you it's not this one this is just the I just ripped the corner off of this green paper here like right there glued it on there this is a little piece of old music paper if you if you want to go to your thrift store and find some music um, a old hymnal or you know just a music book instruction book I've got tons of them so they do sell a kind of similar music note paper at Hobby Lobby which you can also grab but I didn't get to I don't love it um, so that's an option for you or you can go to your thrift store and grab find some a music book just to show you I have in my shop I have been finding so many gorgeous old vintage books and so I've decided to start selling packages of the paper, the pages from the books. So real quick, and, and I try really hard to put a lot of beautiful il illustrations. I try hard to find things that have cute little decorative things like that. Um, this one's a different language, so all different sizes. But I am really careful when I take books apart because I don't like to rip the pages out. I like to take the full two-page spread out. So you will get most of these are two pages. So all you have to do, I mean, that's it. That's your, that's your, you know, a page. You can just slide that in to make your, your, um, signature along with you know some other papers just fold some tea dyed paper in half and there you go um, I want to show you a couple of these really quick so I've got cute little um, recipe books with I love the ripped um, edges that would be ripped out of a spiral bound book I've got beautiful lots of beautiful illustrations in here and I will probably do a separate video I'm trying to make this a quicker video just to walk through but I'll probably do a separate video but just a lot of really beautiful illustrations and things in here and I just can't you don't have room on Etsy to show you know more than nine or ten photos and I've got way more pretty ones in there than that okay is that it yeah the the seam binding ribbon I just already had that you can use any ribbon to bind it with probably a, a thinner ribbon and if you're interested I can you know list some of that in my Etsy shop perfect color all right so I uh, tea dyed just some journaling paper some notebook paper this I embossed it's actually watercolor paper and I think it turned out really pretty I embossed it with an embossing folder that I actually have in my shop I will list that below this is just a little piece of of lace that my mom had given me um, and my mom's given me a bunch of old lace and 
fabrics and things, an old dress that I've been using for junk journals. She is, oh, my parents are so cute. They live in a beautiful old Victorian house that was built in 1901. So, and they are really into antiques and uh, they have restored their home to its original, not, well, you know, not the same as the original, but probably more beautiful than the original. So it's just kind of inspiration for me. She, They love everything Victorian. I'll have to show a picture of their house sometime. It's just beautiful. Um, let's see. What, I just, what was I thinking? Uh, if you don't have some just basic white cream fabric, a little bit of um, muslin, you know, buy a little piece of muslin. I like the unbleached or the, you know, the kind of natural looking. So yeah, I just glued that in and you'll, I would highly recommend investing in some Fabri-Tac glue. I, this has become my very favorite glue. It does not wrinkle up your papers when you, you know, glue papers together, but it's also perfect for gluing fabric or laces onto your papers. Um, it's just easy to work with. It never gets clogged up. You can, um, yeah, it's a little expensive. So if you wanted to go to Joann's and use a coupon on it, I know you cannot, you, Hobby Lobby doesn't have their 40% off coupons anymore. So that's frustrating to me. Okay, let's see, where was I? Little buttons from my stash. They did have, I did buy these cute blue buttons at Hobby Lobby that would be perfect for it. I mean, they, there's, you know, plenty of buttons that would be cute with it. Just some little white ones would be fun too. Uh, let's see. So I've been watching a couple of YouTubers. Heather at Ruby and Pearl has really inspired me and she does this open back um, binding where she glues the lace, a couple of pieces of lace around it. And hers is a little different. So I've also been watching Nazi at Amity Bloom. Amity Bloom, she's got the most beautiful junk journals. So does Heather. Gorgeous. They're both they're both so talented. So I've kind of combined um, Heather's open back, open spine idea and Nazi's um, I don't know what I don't remember what the name of this particular style is where she puts a, like a smaller piece over the cover. So I kind of combined both of their ideas to make my own. So I'm really excited about how this turned out. Um, it's just one signature. It's got a soft cover. It's just a piece of paper with a pocket to make it a little sturdier. But when you tea dye the paper, look how pretty that is. I want to show you this again. The difference, when you tea dye it, it makes it a little more sturdy. I don't know what it does to the fibers, but it's just more, yeah, more sturdy. But look, you can see the difference after I've tea dyed it. I think it's so pretty. So, here I actually folded it up about an inch so that I could cover that little, you know, section. And just used the full piece with the inch folded up as the cover uh, and then I added so this actually came from my parents home this wallpaper um, but you can use any paper here um, the the script paper would be cute here or the music notes um, so, but you wouldn't need to fold the, I liked how you could see a little bit of that on the, you know, on the other side, but you don't need to fold it up. You could just cover the writing, the, the price, um, with your pocket. So you could use the full page and just make that your cover. I think the stitching gives it a little more sturdiness as well. I made a pretty tag. Um, with some more of my embossed paper. Uh, a little bit of the lace and a little piece of 
the music. Um, some old music paper, and I tea dyed this tag too. I think it came out really cute. This is a set you can, and I, I'll have to look that up and link that below because I think these are adorable. The company that makes so you can buy the base tags with the grommets in them already, and they're quite expensive. I think they come out to be like a dollar each. I just got that on Amazon, and then there's a die that goes with it, so you can cut out the inside and. It's a full, you know, it's a full piece. I just cut cut it um, smaller, but so a die that cuts out the inside to layer onto it. It's so cute. And then this is just an old postcard that my mom gave me. She gave me a box of junk that she was going to throw away, like old letters and stuff. And I was pretty excited to get that. So that's kind of fueled my passion. This is for junk journals. This is from the Tim Holtz tags little touch of green there okay this is a page that's in I just showed you the little embellishment there that's from my packet and you'll get one of those two of those or no maybe like five of those I can't remember how many and this is um, some of my handmade not handmade paper but I hand um, tea dyed it and then I embossed it this is kind of an idea from Nazi um, and it's like a linen textured paper and it's so pretty and I will include a couple of those in that in those in the old book page packets it's just a little label that I had anything will work there I cut it in half well not in half but cut a little piece of it off to put here to peek out but any kind of a little tab or label would be cute I had that little Green. This one is from the Tim Holtz package. I thought that would be cute peeking out there. Just something to catch your eye to make you think, oh, you know, what's in there? Okay. So, and this is just a little scrap of fabric that I had. I actually had this old lacy vest that I cut apart. And so go through your old clothes or, you know, go to the thrift store and find old clothes that are made of lace. And, and I actually dyed that blue and I dyed this blue too so and this is my hand dyed paper and I'll be listing I haven't done that yet but I have blue and I have pink that I've done with beets beet juice <laughs> and I sprinkle uh, speckled it with gold and they turned out so pretty so I will probably be listing packages of that too. Um, and this is from a cute old book. It's not really vintage. It's, I think it's from the 90s. But it's so cute and fun to read. It's kind of like hilarious. Wash day. And I love the green. The green embellishments. Like they that wash on Monday have all week to dry. They that wash on Tuesday are not so much awry. They that wash on Wednesday are not so much to blame. They that wash on Thursday, wash for shame. They that wash on Friday, wash in need. Let's see where's the other side of it. And then it says, they who wash on Saturday are sluts indeed. <laughs> so, so funny. Let's see, where is it? Oh, I can't find it now that I want it. So cute. The cutest book. It's called Mrs. Dunwoody's. Um, you know, hints, homemaking hints or something like that. A little piece of the wallpaper again. And I will probably list, she gave me a, a roll of this beautiful wallpaper. It's kind of brittle. It's really old. It's probably from the 40s. I don't think it has any glue on the back of it. But I'll probably list some of that in my shop too. There's a little piece of the trim from Hobby Lobby. Um, I didn't show you this. This is just some ribbon from Hobby Lobby. They have pink and they have blue. I'm thinking, um, oh, whoops, I'm not in frame. I'm sorry. Okay, ribbon from Hobby Lobby. And this is included also a couple of, no, maybe, I don't remember how many, maybe eight or ten sheets of this uh, in the old book 
pages. This is like some children's primer from school that you learn her to write on. Um, just some music page from a music book I've got here. I love it because there's music on one side and then it's got like music instruction on the other side. This is just some parchment paper that I use when I am um, I'll place my papers that I'm dying on top of it and put it in the oven and it turned out cute. It's got kind of some scorch marks there. <laughs> a little bit of the blue dye. Uh, an old recipe book. I love the little, you know, all of the textures and different the tear tearing things. You don't really need any special tools besides something to poke holes in to do your, you know, your ribbon binding. Um, you don't need a needle or anything like that to do this. And I'll, I'll try to do a, if you guys are interested, let me know in a, like a full tutorial for this. Um, but yeah, I love that look that it's been ripped out. Um, little, another little scrap of the the embossing that I do have that folder in my shop. This little piece is a roll of lace. This one actually came from Joann's. I love it. And like I said, I dyed that blue. Thought it turned out super cute. This is a printable. I tried to keep the printables to a minimum. I think this is the only one I've got in here. And this is from Heather at Ruby and Pearl. So just Ruby. I think it's Ruby X. Pearl is how it's written out. Oh, I'll try to link that below. And it's like $3.99 for a download that has maybe four different um, beautiful French vintage invoices. Isn't that pretty? And I, it's actually just like a creamy color and I printed that on some of my blue dyed paper. So you can see on the back it's just the blue dyed, but this makes it a little more green because it the background is a little bit yellow in the download. I tried to find the lightest one that I could find so it didn't change the color of the blue too much. But then I distressed it and I folded it a little bit and just put some ink on that fold to make it look, you know, like it's been folded up for a lot of years. I thought it turned out really pretty. Isn't that gorgeous? Let's see, this is just a paper bag. I And you can slide something inside if you want to, but it's kind of delicate, so I decided not to. This is another embossing folder I've used on here. I do have that in my, that in my shop, so I will link those below. Another of those book pages, some music pages. It's torn out. That's one a large one that will be in your package, and I'll, you'll see on the other side of it how I folded it over because it's a tall. It's I think 11 and a half inches tall. And these are some little bookmarks I've made. This is the butter another butterfly from the Tim Holtz package. Um, I just ripped. You know, you just rip things. You don't have to even have a paper cutter or anything. Paper trimmer just. Just rip, just fold them where you want them and rip them. It's so easy and so fun and nothing has to be perfect. You don't need to line anything up. You can have some things hanging out farther. I mean, anything goes. It's just so fun, so addicting. Um, the little bulb pins you can buy a Hobby Lobby from Tim, the Tim Holtz. Um, it's just pretty a small package. I just try to save mine. This one was from a shirt that I bought from the tag from it. And then these little charms I have in my shop. Well, I will get them listed. I need to do that. Um, let's see. Oh, I've got them right here. I'll show you what I've got in here. So I almost used that. It's quite pretty little brass. So I've got three of the keys and just one of the heart lock. And then I've got three little heart locks and three little keys. So, and I actually painted, let's see, where did I put those? I wanted to show you, I painted some white with some chalk paint and they turned out so cute. 
and I almost put them on the front cover of this book, but I decided to just make it simple. And, oh gosh, I wanted to show you that. Where did I put them? So I decided to just make it simple and do the butterflies. But, oh, well, you can see them in my last video where I did the haul when I was trying to decide. Gosh, I don't know where they went. Okay, anyway, moving on. Um, this is a, another little piece of that vest that I had, that lace vest that I cut out. I thought that turned out really cute, and that would make a really cute bookmark even, I think, you know. Okay, this is some more of that blue dyed paper, and this is a piece of this lace that I tea dyed. You don't have to tea dye things if you don't want to, but it's really fun. There's lots of videos out there on tea dyeing things, but I think I'll do one that's more specifically for, um, you know, doing pattern paper and maybe show you the lace. So got the gold, the pretty gold, shimmery. If you can see that on that paper, my dyed paper. And a little button and then a little piece of that lace. The nylon net lace and I did emboss on that paper as well because I wanted this side to be pretty little I just ripped a little scrap save your scraps of that paper and this is where I um, fussy cut a piece so that's, if you want to do that, you'll need a second piece of the blue floral, the large blue floral. And look how cute this is. This book, I found this book at the thrift store yesterday and I had to include some of it in here. This is just the sweetest book I've ever seen in my whole life. It's called The Art of Homemaking. And it has the cutest illustrations in it. Oh my gosh, I was just dying over it. And I think it cost me $2 at the thrift store. But, and it's got some really inspiring stuff in it. It's from the 60s. Look at these illustrations. Isn't that so precious? So yeah, if you're... Uh, wanting to make junk journals, I would definitely go to the thrift store. I thought that because I already had this cut out, and I just took that in there. Is that just perfect? So sweet. Okay, I'll use a little piece of that fabric, a little piece of the trim there. Just simple little things. Just glue it on the front and the back with your with your Fabri-Tac glue, you don't even need to sew it because I put that on after I had sewed that paper, but it would have been cuter if I had, would have sewn later. Okay, this one, I used this full sheet and I just folded it up so, you, so that it covered, you know, so that writing is covered up. Just folded it up, put your tape on later, but just glue, just glue the sides to make a pocket and that's the center. Right there, sure. I should have shown you that first. That would make more sense. But that's the center of your your book, your signature. That's what they call it. Just a signature is just a section of of pages. And sometimes people will do more than one signature and sew them in next to each other. And I didn't even sew. I just poked holes and then poked my ribbon through it. It was really easy. Um, so this is that pretty dark blue floral. I just made a tag with that. A little bunched up a little piece of the fabric. This is one of the Tim Holtz. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what is that called? Tag. Uh, just bunched up some of the seam binding there. I glued it on. I had envelope that I had dyed. Another piece of I just um, embossed that with the one of the embossing folders that I have in my shop. I made another little tag with the paper and just stuck a little piece of lace. This is another of the book pages. 
from that, Mrs. Dunwoody's book, is so cute. She talks about how um, you should send someone a thank you card if they give you a gift. No later than 10 days after receiving the gift is always best. Or if you were a house guest, no more than a week. But she shows this cute little thank you note. 1892. Dear Aunt Middle Mary, you have the rare ability to select just the right gift. The puzzle you sent kept me up half the night. I'll get it yet. Thank you so much. Finally, Charles. So cute. There's another cute little letter. So I just took that in. I love the green illustrations. And there's another. This is just a copy of that from that book I thought it would be fun to you know you couldn't use the back for some journaling so I didn't um, do both sides but this is from the Tim Holtz the, that, that die cut package that I showed you I thought it went really pretty with it is is it just so cute and is it just me <laughs> I love all the wrinkles and stuff that I got from tea dyeing. And that's just a piece of my linen tea dyed paper. And this is from Tim Holtz. Also, it's linen, 